In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Torp, which is a framework on gRPC. We're going to follow the readme. I'm going to briefly explain what is gRPC, RPC, why it's different than HTTP. I'm going to go through an example and why you might want to consider this next time you build out your backend architecture. All right, so I'm over at github.com, twitch.tv slash Torp, and this is a framework made by Twitch. And let me just read it. Torp is a framework for service to service communication, emphasizing simplicity and minimalism. It generates routing and serialization from API definition files and lets you focus on your application's logic instead of thinking about folder role like HTTP methods and paths and JSON. Torp is similar to gRPC, but without the custom HTTP server and transport implementations. What is gRPC? Well, this is a framework created by Google. And as it says, gRPC is a modern open source, high performance remote procedure call. That's what RPC stands for framework that can run in any environment. It can efficiently connect services in and across data centers with pluggable support for load balancing, tracing, health checking, and authentication. It is also applicable in last mile of distributed computing to connect devices, mobile applications, and browsers to backend services. And that last part, the browser to backend services is what we're going to focus on with Twerp in this video. As with any kind of example, uh, let, let's just go straight to the documentation. So here it's twitch.tv.github.io, twerp docs, and we go through the intro. So before going right into this, there's basically two components, but there's going to be more up to four. There is going to be your proto file. And this is what I meant by the definition. So you can have, you see here, there's a few syntax import examples here. We can ignore those for now. And then you have the actual service with the RPC endpoint called hello. So this is the actual route name hello, and it's expecting a hello request, which is defined right below, which only contains the string or the subject field, which is a string, and it's going to respond with hello response, again, defined right below message hello response, it has one field, which is text, which is going to be of type string. So now we have this type safety across our API layer with proto buffs here. But however, before you do that, you definitely need to install a few things you need to have go installed, you need to have proto call buffer compiles or product, and you need to install twerp as well. So I'm going to link all this in the description below. All right, so here I have a completely empty empty directory. There's, there's literally nothing here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new go mod in it. I'm going to just call this github.com slash example. This is what they kind of suggest you initialize your app. So now we have our go.mod file. And before creating a main.go, let's actually go back into the docs and look what they recommend for us to do. So here, start with the proto definition plates in RPC slash haberdasher service.proto. So we need this proto file. So let's go ahead and make the directory and add our service.proto file. All right. So here I have VS code open. I'm going to open up the service.proto file. It's completely empty. It's nothing there. But let's go ahead and copy the uh, service.proto file they recommend in their example and walk through it. Go ahead and copy this. Let's quickly just walk through everything here. So here, syntax is pro -thi. I think this is allows pro talk where you're supposed to install. And you can actually check if you have everything installed here. So you can do pro talk. I think it's dash dash version. So you can see here, I have lib product 3.6.1. So make sure you have that. And for my go version, I have go. I think it's just dash version, actually. Just go version. Yeah, go version 122. So I have the latest go version. Okay, so quickly breaking this down, we have this haberdasher service makes has for clients. So we just define our service. And then within the service, you can think of these RPC definitions, these like function calls as the routes to our backend. So if you use any kind of previous Go tutorial, you'd have maybe a routes.go file and that would have everything defined. You may have used Chi or Jin or maybe just the standard HTTP package from the standard library to define your routes and they would have like a handler funk here. That kind of concept doesn't exist with protobuf files. Instead, you have this RPC function called make hat. So you just declare the name of it, it expects a size. So if we define size here, you can see size of hat in inches, so it's expecting an argument of inches, which is type int 32, and it's going to return a hat. And you can see right down here, our hat is the expected response for our make hat procedure. And it's going to respond with three things, a inches, color, and name. And the inches is type int 32, color and name are both strings. So again, I really like the fact that this has a uh, type safety in our API layer. And if you're talking between different, you know, systems, if you have a decoupled front end from a decoupled back end, this is going to be very, very nice for you. So now we have one make hat function defined. Let's go ahead and actually implement this and generate the protobuf files to generate code, run the product compiler pointed at your services dot proto files. Now I want to warn you, if you run this, you'll get a direct error. I'll show you uh, right here. So if I open 
open up my editor, right? And if I just literally paste it, I'm going to get an error. So there's a quite a bit of a typo in the docs. Have no fear. I'm here to help you out. To get that result, you're going to go ahead and be in the root of your directory. So outside that slash RPC directory, you're going to run the following command. What you need to do is run the product command. And the first argument we're going to pass in is going to be twerp underscore out. And what this is going to generate is those twerp files for us, which is essentially how the twerp framework, which is on top of the gRPC framework, wires everything up from our protobuf file to our actual server, which we're going to pull in and have all those nice type definitions. So we're going to do paths. It's going to look a little weird. And then we're going to do source underscore relative from where we're currently calling this. And then we're going to do go underscore out. So this is the just regular gRPC framework. I'm going to generate those files as well. So we're going to do the same thing. Paths equals source underscore relative. And now we need to define where that service.proto file is the one we just defined. And that is an RPC slash haberdasher service.proto. So if you run this, you can see here, we don't get anything from our CLI. If we open up our project tree, you can see here now we have the service.pb.go, which is generated from the dash dash go underscore out flag. And then we have the service.twerp. And you can open these up. You can see there, there's quite a bit of files here. I mean, there's large files. There's a bunch of stuff that's auto generated. You don't really want to mess with this. But you can see here, we're getting some errors off the bat. So these errors that we see here, these are kind of just annoying. So if I to get rid of these errors, you can do a go get from the root of your project. Go get google.golang.org slash proto buff slash proto at latest. And if you run this, it should get rid of some of them. But now we get some from our twerp files. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. And this is just complaint. You can see here line 11 that we don't have the github.com slash twitch TV slash twerp in our go dot sum. So let's go ahead and get this as well. You can just do go get github.com slash twitch TV slash twerp. Awesome. So now we don't have any errors. We can actually start importing our definitions into a server. If you guys like go in this kind of content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. All right. So going back up, you can see if you open the generate twerp.go file, you should see a go interface like this. So this is kind of what defines everything for us to use along with code to instantiate clients and servers. So now let's implement the server. So what we're going to do is basically a very simple go file defined in internal slash haberdasher server slash server.go. So let's go ahead and create this and basically copy this down and explain what happens. All right. So you can see here I have internal haberdash server and then server.go. So let's go ahead and do our package declaration here. And let's just copy the files from from here. So package haberdash server we already have that Let's go ahead and just copy this down. All right, so let's explain what's going on here. So the imports I don't think are too crazy. However, the coolest part is this. This is github.com slash example slash RPC slash haberdasher. So this is kind of why I went with the same mantra of defining my go.mod file here as github.com slash example. I'm sure it's not like anything too crazy, but this allows us to basically reference whatever's inside our slash RPC slash haberdasher folder. So you can see here, this is basically these files here, these dot go files all the way up here, package haberdasher. And this is what really contains the magic for us to implement our structs and our requests. So a hat is a piece of headwear made by a haberdasher. But you can see here, this is what we actually care about. This are the return expectations, our inches, color and name. And this is how everything gets wired via Torp. So if you go all the way back, this is how we can pull everything in. You see, we're going to call it PB. We have this server shook, which is empty, but you can populate this with anything you want. I'll actually show you an example after this one. So then we have this function called make hat, which is a pointer to our server shock, which essentially is nothing. But you can see here, the first argument expects is this context and then this PB dot size pointer. And you can see here, this is where we have that definition that inches or even more importantly, that int 32. And this again is where that magic for RPC, gRPC and Torp kind of come in. You can see here, if size of inches is less than zero, we're going to return an error and Torp actually provides us with some nice errors off, you know, baked in so invalid argument error. We can wrap our own errors. There's a bunch of things that come baked in with Torp. But if everything goes well, we actually return a pointer to our hat. And if you can see this, you can see inches, color and name. And we just say we return the same inches from the request, essentially the size request, and then we have our color and our name. Okay, and so the next part that they kind of want you to do is just to create this command server main dot go and actually made a mistake. So just grab this, go back, don't name it package because this act as our entry point. So just paste this in here. You can see we have our package main, we have all the external kind of routing configured for our go package. So we have the server, which is going to be just declared from the server definition. Again, this is just a naked or empty server struct. And then here we have this haberdasher. So we can go ahead and run this and actually 
curl the request for make hat. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. You can see here, and all I'm going to do is, so I'm at the root of my project. We can do go run CMD server main dot go. We don't have a print message, which probably would have been better in hindsight, but that's fine. But we know it's listening on port 8080. If I go ahead and open up a new terminal, I can actually run a curl request to curl the make hat endpoint. So the endpoint definition is a little wonky. If you've never worked with a protobuf file, it's not intuitive in the sense that the actual name and this definition, this torp.example.haberdasher makes a huge difference in how you are able to curl your requests. So basically you can see here, torp works over HTTP 1.1. All RPC methods mount to routes to follow the format, post and then prefix slash package dot service slash method. So the prefix is torp by default, but it is optional and can be configured with other paths like my custom prefix. You can see some examples here. So how does this work in our example with our service.proto definition? So basically curl dash x post, it's a post request. We're gonna do HTTP forward slash forward slash local host 8080 slash twerp. And then the next part comes directly from our service.proto here. So if I go all the way up, put this down a little bit, this is where this twerp.example.haberdasher comes in. So twerp.example.haberdasher and then the name of the service. And the name of the service on line 13 is capital H haberdasher. So dot haberdasher and then the path or the function call, which is make hat. So we do make hat. And now we can add our headers. So content application slash JSON. So I went ahead and reformat a little bit just to make it easier, but it's essentially the same thing. Okay, so now if we submit this, you can see here inches 12 color black name Derby. And because if we actually look at the uh, service.go file, it's just randomizing between the five options in our string slice here and between the four options in the other string slice here. So color inches 12 color is black name Bowler and before it was color black name Derby. Okay, so that was a good kind of cute example of getting started with gRPC and Torp. I want to showcase more of like a maybe a bit more advanced example. I'm not gonna go too in detail of it. But I want to showcase the format of how you can kind of write your requests and responses. So here I have the exact same Haber dasher service with the exact same make hack function. I didn't even change that. Uh, but you can see here I have more function calls. You have this one called register, create post, create comment, delete comment, update comment, and then toggle common reaction. So all of these have the their own unique expectations. So you can see here for register, we have this register user request. And if we go up wherever it's defined, you can see here that we're expecting this email, a first name and a password. Go back the same thing. We have this register user response and all this way down. And then in our service.go, you can see here we have tons of different definitions of how these functions actually get called. Like this is the API layer, right? So we have this create post function here on my API layer. Uh, it does some validation, assigns a new UID, does some realigning here, doesn't really matter, this is just an example. And then down here, we actually have a database call to create posts, and this actually inserts the value into our database. So that's all there is to say about gRPC, RPC, and Torp in general. It's that it's an alternative to HTTP. I think it makes writing your backend logic way easier. It's faster, it's really, really nice, especially if you have these microservices that have to talk to each other. This is such a good protocol to handle that. But if this is your first time thinking about Torp or even using gRPC, let me know in the comment section below. What did you think? Did you like this? Does it make sense? Again, everything I talked about here will be available. All links in the description below, but make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more of this type of content. And I hope you guys learned something and go build something with gRPC. Boom.